You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. Tell the tackle, the defensive end if he's over him, if he's not, you drive down on the first man who is inside. Pull back and get him. Take the first man outside the offense. No one shows. What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. You can email the show, Packers Total Access at gmail.com. You can text us at 865-658-5824. I'm joined alongside Tim, live in Green Bay, fresh off the road. Got all the holiday traveling done, right, Tim? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Happy to be here, dude. Catching up. Catching up. I was uh, in and out for a while, but ready to roll, man. Happy to be here. Heck yeah, dude. I was I was going to try to give everybody a shout out in the chat, but I think we had like 90 some messages already. So um, just want to thank you guys for hopping in here and chopping it up with us. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, I, I seen some chatter about the stream going down, this and that. Um, just to kind of clarify once more, there's nothing we can do about the stream going down if we do this live. OK, the only other option would be to pre-record the video and then set it as a premiere that would allow me to do a copyright scan and show YouTube, hey, we're, we're aware that there's a copyright claim on this. And essentially what it means is we're allowed to use the footage, but the NFL profits off of it. OK, so if there's any kind of advertising, we wouldn't be able to get any of the, the few pennies on the dollar that they give you for advertising anyway. So um, with all that being said, you guys let me know if you would rather me not do it live and just cut the video. I think you're going to miss out on a lot of chat that you're actually having in here if we do it that way. Just understand that the stream is going to go down and come back up, go down and come back up. Every time it detects there's NFL films being used, the stream will go down temporarily. Then it gets approved and it comes right back up. So I wish there was something else I could do about it. Unfortunately, we can't. So just want to kind of give you guys a heads up um, and, you know, we'll vote on it. If you guys want me to just uh, just cut a video, right, and we can do it. But again, the premiere would have a live chat. But I probably wouldn't be able to hang out during the chat after cutting the hour and a half video. You know what I mean? So I definitely wouldn't be in there. Not that you need me in there anyway, but just wanted to kind of uh, let you guys know exactly what's uh, what's going on there. But uh, uh, Omer in the chat says, Clayton and the boys going going to need some extra diesel in that big cup tonight. Let's go playoffs, baby. Time to win out right here, baby. Look, you know it. That's that third cup. That third, We always hit that third cup range, then when we get to PTA live at 8 o'clock or 7 your time. You know what's funny is I'm I'm on a bottled water right now, but uh, I did I had a cup of coffee about an hour ago, so I'm I'm wired. I'm hypersensitive to caffeine, so I'm I'm wired. Let's go. <laughs> Everybody's trying to flush out all the sodium right now for Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I've drank eight bottles of water today. I'm just I'm trying to just like I said get all the salt out. <laughs> yep. Let's get a fresh start here. So with that being said, let's waste no more time. Without further ado, whatever that means. Let's uh let's do this thing, Tim. I'm gonna share the screen. You just confirm you can see that. Yes, I can. 
All right, guys. So this is Chalk Talk. Obviously, Detroit Lions Thanksgiving Day. Huge win. Jordan Love's biggest win of his young career. Obviously, his highest PFF grade as well. Absolutely balled out. Um, this was a fun one to watch. Like I said, there's a lot of plays left out. I think we we keyed in on like 10 or 11 plays. Um, I'm focusing on plays that happen on scoring drives. I'm focusing on explosive plays. And then at the end, when they got the little mop-up time and, and, and Joe Barry just kind of played – back a little and made them use up the field, use up the clock, knowing that the clock was the opponent at that point. We didn't include that drive. So really no reason to do that, knowing that that was just kind of mop-up time for them. But first play right out of the gate, Tim, we come out in 11-gun nasty, Trey Wright, play action, 969, Sif Max Protect. Um, I want to say this about Trey Wright. People hear Trey, what does that mean? Trey, the difference between trips and Trey, okay, Trips means you've got three wide receivers to one side of the formation, all right? Trey means you've got three uh, three bodies to one side of the formation, but one of them is a tight end. There you see the tight end with three tight set. Obviously, it's not that tight bunch you look at typically. That's the difference between Trey and Trips, for those of you who are wondering. If, let's say that, let's say that uh, there was no tight end and we just came out in a 10 set, right, where it's one running back, no tight ends, and that guy was a wide receiver, say, lined up here, we would call that Trips right as opposed to Trey Rod. Okay, that's the difference between that, just in case somebody wanted to know. So 11-gun nasty, obviously the nasty splits, you know what it means, Tim. The, all the receivers are lined up inside the numbers. That's that's nasty. 11-gun nasty, Trey Rod. We just explained we're going play action, 969, Y sift, <clears throat> max protect. Excuse me, it's too early for the voice to go. I know that. I want to say this. I would actually call this 969 choice, okay? And the reason being – these guys are looking to uh, to stretch the field vertically, essentially is what they're looking to do, Tim. So they're, they're in a single high look. You guys know how we talk talk about them talking uh, about three different ways of reading the defense or, or three different types of reads within the West Coast offense. One of them is is kind of pick a side, right? And typically on pick a side, what it is, is you're, you've got a two high beater and a one high beater on each side, okay? Like on one side, you've got a two high beater. On the other side, you've got a one high beater. You're going to see a little bit of that today. But essentially, they've got a one high look. So there's a safety off screen back here, okay? He's playing single high. So essentially what you got is it looks like single high man. It could be a zone match with principles. You've seen that a, a, a lot from both defenses in this game. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking Dobbs down the field, okay? That's the nine aspect of the choice. Then you're going dig with the six, and then you're going nine. And what you're trying to do is make that safety commit, okay? So if they were to be disguising and they go to a too high shell, when you go too high, that means middle field open, you would look to hammer the dig, okay? Max protect simply means the tight end staying in the block. They're going to go play action, and the running back's going to stay in the block. So you've got maximum protection back here, just a three-man route combination, route concept, passing concept, route combination, and you're going to make this safety choose. Now, what I noticed on this play, and the reason I think it was a choice, is you see Dobbs kind of work inside, and he's really trying to get that safety to commit. The safety's off screen. I didn't bother to take the time to get the all-22, but just trust me on this. The safety actually clamps down a bit watching Dobbs. And what happens with Dobbs is he then kind of turns it into an out when he sees the safety clamp down. He's done his job. What Jordan's doing here, Tim, after the play action, he's simply looking, what's the safety doing? and he's trying to manipulate him a little bit. The safety stays at home, and there's no too high shell. You know the dig is off the table unless you have to improvise and hit it, hit it in the second window. So once the safety turns his hips and focuses on Dobbs, he's just going to launch this thing up to Christian, and that's why the safety was late getting home on this deep pass to Christian Watson. Unfortunately, it got underthrown by Jordan Love, or this would have been six, and we could have put some of that – some of that criticism to bed about the deep accuracy. But let's roll the tape here. Again, 969 choice. It's a go, dig, go. Maximum protect. The Y is going to sift across. See him sift. He's staying in max protect. Does a great job looking for work there. Great pocket. And I want to say beautiful throw, but let's be honest at what. And you've seen Scoop basically had to come to a stop here, right? And for all those people dogging Scoop, saying he couldn't high point a ball, he doesn't come back for the ball, he doesn't wrestle for the ball, there you go, guys. And it's not the first time he's done it this year. I was so happy to see him have a big game here, Tim. But you see, I mean, if he if he doesn't hang that thing up there, he's walking in the end zone, bro. Hey, I'm a, I'm going to echo the same sentiment as Devontae Adams. Put some respect on his name. Yeah, Put some I've seen that tweet too, man. On his name. Look at this. Yeah, you excellent, me? excellent time. He, I mean, he timed it perfect. See, when you when you're trying to high point, you you know your timing's really everything. It's not so much your vertical leap and your 
you know, stretch, outstretched arms, all that. You, you got to really time that right. No, and um, yeah, that was great, man. Great, great awareness on that play too. I mean, I was, I was really focused on his eyes and his head too. Um, just getting around and in position for that ball. So Scoot is uh, on the upswing again. So hopefully he, we, we close this year out on a strong note, man, for real. Mr. November, man. Yep. Move, move, move over Reggie Jackson. We got a new Mr. November here. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. That was Derek Jeter's title, wasn't it, Mr. November? Reggie, oh, yeah, he was, was, yeah, yeah. Reggie was Mr. October, right? Yeah, absolutely. So later that drive, first quarter, 12-16 left is when the play, I think it actually happens here. This is the Reed touchdown pass, okay? Now, there is a lot of eye candy here, okay? This is really, really cool setup by the floor. So we come out an 11-gun empty strong right T boundary, okay? 11-gun, one running back, one tight end, okay? Strong right, the tight end's on the right side. T boundary, there's your T. Why is it boundary? It's the short side of the field. See, they're on the right hash. And then, of course, this is what you would refer to as a trips left look, right? Three wide receivers on the opposite side. So, again, 11 gun empty, strong right, T boundary, right? Wrong. We're going to go shift two, nub right, T same, X slant, slay, Y corner, T angle. So, essentially what's going to happen here, gang, is the T is going to shift into the backfield, all right, which now makes this nub right. The nub right formation or a nub left is when the tight end is on the line of scrimmage and he's the only target on that side of the ball. So you go trips left, and instead of saying trips left, you can say nub right. So you don't have to say trips left, strong right. You just say nub right, and you automatically know he's the only target on that side of the field. He's on the right side of the field. You don't even have to – you can remove some of the lingo, and that's what makes it a little bit easier to communicate. So let's talk about – let's show – let's let him shift back here to where we're going. There you see the T shifting, right? Look at the defense trying to adjust what the hell's going on here. Let's go. Okay, wait. All right, get down. Get down, Aiden. Here we go. Get ready. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, here's a real play. We're going nub right, T same. You see, they're on the same side of the field. We're going to go X slant. Who's the X? The receiver on the line of scrimmage, okay? Farthest from the tight end, opposite the tight end, right? I would consider this X. Now, he's not technically on the line of scrimmage, but I darn sure wouldn't call this X. So, that would probably be more fly than anything that F receiver we talk about because they they can line up pretty much anywhere on the field on the line of scrimmage. That's why LaFleur likes to use that flyer because it, it sometimes when the defense is trying to communicate their calls, they may refer to someone as an X, and he's not technically the X. If you just throw that little bit of a wrinkle in of the quote-unquote flyer receiver, it can cause a little bit of confusion. And what defenses have done is they've wisened up now, and they would just say from left to right, from outside in, there's your one receiver, there's your two there's your three. So they would communicate. You get the one, you get the three, you get the two. That's how they cleared that up. That's just kind of a little bit of the evolution of the game and how it's communicated from coaches to players and then players to players on the field. So we're going to go X slant. Okay. Which is going to, this is almost like a tosser. Okay. So there's going to be multiple slants here. This, this right here is called tosser that past concept. Okay. But I said X slant slay because there's a, a, another aspect of slant with a quick out. That's called slay. So we would just say X slant slay. All right. So your X down here, right? There's your slant. There's your slay concept. On the opposite side, you got Y corner. He's just going to kind of work a a little corner route over here. And then, of course, you got T angle. He's going to go way out wide and then try to cut back underneath. You're clearing these guys out across the middle so you can hit him if you need to. Now, on this play, it gets really interesting because – Some people were saying he was trying to throw to Christian and Christian ran the wrong route. That could have been the case. Someone said that LaFleur mentioned it. I personally didn't hear that. It could have been the case. Nonetheless, I think Jordan was throwing this ball to Jaden Reed. But let's watch this absolute freaking missile that 10 puts on him right here. And this right here is going to earn you the nickname J Money like you've been calling him. Look at that laser. Yep. I mean, it is. Tim, watch this next next angle here. First of all, great route by Reed. Watch him set him up outside. Look at that jab. See it, Tim? Yeah, I'm telling you, man, that's that's what gets a corner. And the corner plays it pretty good. That might even be branch, but just that little bit of extra right there, right? So some people were saying he was expecting Christian to sit. I don't think that's the case. I think that was a slay concept underneath, and you see the ball just. I mean, this next angle is phenomenal, dude. Jaden Reed hanging on to it. Look at this right here, Tim. I mean, we got to slow this way down. I'm going to take this to 25. percent We're really going to nerd out over this one. Watch this pass and how close it comes to hitting Christian Watson's arm, bro. Look at this. Is that insane? It's almost like it stopped in midair and hovered, Tim. Watch it kind of hover right here. Whoop. 
I mean, oh. you talk about <laughs> you talk about spinning the football, man. Yeah, that thing was an absolute dart. Look, look at it again. Watch it come out of his hand. This is kind of that sidearm release. Watch this. I mean, he's spinning that sucker. He is what we call down here in the south. We call that humming that tater. He's humming <laughs> that tater. Look at that. Oh man, you ever threw a potato at somebody, boy? You can do some damn. Things. <laughs> we used to used to steal them out of the neighbor's garden and throw them at each other. <laughs> the bag caught on we got we got blistered for it but that's a story for a different pod um let's see here all right so that's how you go up seven to six all right so you're up seven to six at this point and um you've got uh green bay's got the ball back a third and eight play here we come out in 11 gun bunch strong left t week wolf y curl x dig why did i show this play tim it's a scoring drive and this was a crucial play. This is one of the plays in the game that many people would just overlook. They're mm. going to be showing these phenomenal throws, these phenomenal catches, and it might be on a drive where it doesn't even matter. I could I could care less of a play that didn't lead to a score or didn't have an impact on the game. If we don't convert this third and eight, we probably don't go on down and score. Therefore, we probably don't win this game. This is a huge play. And again, guess who it was? Christian Watson making the play. So, as we line it up here, 11 gun bunch, strong left, T weak, wolf, uh, Y curl, X dig. Let's talk about what it means. Wolf is an out, okay, with a corner route over top of it. And he's really going to drag that corner out and try to try to hesitate with it. You're going to have Y curl here in the middle, and then you're going to have X dig, okay? That's your route concept. I believe the running back stays in, if I remember correctly, but really key in down here. Again, a third and eight play, if you don't convert this, this game may go in a totally different direction. Let's roll the tape. This is early or still early in the game in the first quarter. Scoot's going to chop them down. Great throw, anticipation. Not really a great throw, but great timing, I should say. You see it's high, but watch Scoot go up and get this thing. Gets that second foot. When he got that second foot in, I'm like, they better shut up talking about Scoot. Look at this. I remember when, when I watched this live, and I was like, he got it down. I, I just – I had the faith seeing that live watching him slam watch him slam this right toe down real quick bang Boop. love it yeah. you know and that's again. big boy wide receiver play right there that's grown man wide receiver play you know Absolutely. again this is another one we file into the put some respect on his name i mean you talk about body control and yeah. agility dude yeah, and people were saying he, he has no body control. He can't control. It's like shut up. Dude, this and, is a, this is a huge play, man. I'm yeah, telling you, and that's you. him making a play for 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 this team. You know, you're right. Jordan got that ball out in rhythm, but that that ball is that was really high. <laughs> Look at this right here too. This don't feel good right here, Tim. Yeah, getting that ankle stepped on. Yep. Those are those are. But spot he's made out of glass, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I thought for sure he was supposed to stay down on the field after he high pointed that first one, and lo and behold, he's making plays all day. <laughs> we got we got to stop with this pettiness. We're you and I, we're so petty, bro. We are so petty. All right, so later that drive, third and one play, we're still winning seven to six, three eighteen left in the first quarter. We're going eleven gun, nasty double, strong right, Z wing shift, play action, slot cross, Z corner, Y leak. Let's see if we can decipher some of that. So let's just start with. Um, what the uh, what the play is itself, you're going to see a Z shift to wing here. What's that mean? Notice the Z receiver is Christian Watson. Why is he the Z? There's your tight end. That makes him the flyer. He'll most likely the X. They can be interchangeable. We don't know how Matt LaFleur refers to that. This is your Z up here. This right here is your Z. Okay, so what he's going to do, they love doing this with Christian Watson. He's going to do a short shift, and he's going to shift to the wing positions, like wing back. Okay, so it's technically a running back position right there playing wing back, just so you know. So let me back it up so I can get the uh, all right, the play itself. So when we draw this out, now that we know the Z-wing shift means, we're going play action. Obviously, we're going to ha fake a handoff to the running back. We're going to go slot cross, which is a sim essentially a climb with a backside dig. You see this every single game. It's one of the go-to uh, concepts in Matt LaFleur's offense. You're going to go Z-corner, so he's going to kind of hesitate, a little delay. And then he's going to run kind of a corner route out here. And then you're going to see the Y leak. He's going to hammer Hutchinson and then leak out right here. Okay. And of course, this is the touchdown uh, catch, touchdown pass and catch to Tucker Craft on that side. So let's watch it unfold. Again, you got the slot cross on the other side. Look at all of the, look at all of the attention on this side over here. Look at all this. Now look back. There's nothing, right? This guy's taking a peek in. He's got to fit his run gap, right? 
So when he sees Christian kind of hesitate, now he comes through, he's got to go with him. Yep. Right here. That that right there won you the play. Now let's back it up and focus on Tucker Craft on the edge there, right? Watch him hold up against Aiden Hutchinson. Now he knows he just needs to slow him down and sell the block to let this DB commit to Christian Watson, and he knows he can just release him and he's going to be open out there in the flat. Watch this. Look at him sell it, release. That and is Jordan the- Jordan extending the pocket with his feet. You know, that, those little steps there that we see before the ball's delivered is, is And the awesome. little lollipop, right? The lollipop. Yep. Good touch but, here on the ball. Boop. Yeah, nothing fancy. That's like Beautiful taking Mountain Dew from a baby, man. Take and Jaden Reed, an excellent job coming across the goal line there at the end. You see that? Yeah, little, little box out. Little box out. Little, little basketball there. And that's, that's talk about spatial awareness, just knowing that that, that defender's bearing down, too. I want to take and, it back just to show everybody because I noticed that earlier, too, man. It's pretty cool. Jay Money throwing Hard. it off the, the right foot, too. I just noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> Look at number 11 here, right? Yeah. Watch him right here. He knows he knows exactly where he's at. He knows where the defender is. Let me just kind of get in the way yep. a little bit. Yep. Beautiful, man. Like I said, man, like, like stealing Mountain Dew from a baby. It doesn't get any better than that. Look at 21 biting on that 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 play action fake by oh, J yeah. Money, too. Beautiful shot there. So now you're up 14 to 6, 224 left in the in the first quarter. This is a second and 12 play. We're on defense here. Obviously, Detroit got the ball. Um, they're gonna come out. We're gonna come out in a nickel two four five. There's your two down linemen. Let's go to blue here. These are your four linebackers. That's the nickel two four five we talk about. We're running a cover three mock fire. Okay. What's that mean? Um, cover three mock fire. Essentially, you've got a safety that's already deep back here. Carrington's going to kind of play deep safety here as well. I think this is your deep on this. No, I think he may play underneath, and there's your deep. But essentially, you've got cover three. This guy's dropping out. This guy's dropping out. So you've got three underneath, three over the top, and our boy right here, uh, Quay Walker, is going to fire. Okay, so that's your mock fire. He's the mock backer. He's going to fire on a blitz here. So it's nickel 245, cover three, mock fire. And I want you to really key in right here, Tim, on Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark. They make this play go. Watch Kenny kind of collapse the pocket, and then I want you to watch Gary's motor, okay? And and, and look at where the, the left tackle, look at where this guy ends up by the end of this play. Let's roll the tape. Look at Kenny. Just, I mean, he's already back there. Kenny's the disruptor. Now look at Gary, right? You're thinking, okay, Gary got walked out and he's getting swallowed up, right? Wrong. Watch him put his foot in the in the in the turf and then come back and make the play here. Watch and watch the guy that's blocking him. <laughs> look at See him. how fast. Oh yeah, dude. He's I mean, I mean we're watching in slow motion. It's right. like he is he is so good at using his hands, Tim. Like you seen him on the sideline during the commercial break. He was over to look like a ninja, showing yep. the guys, hey, here's what I did, here's what I did. Watch his hands. Punch, watch, watch this. Whoop. Look at 68 on his keister. There's your fumble. And of course, our boy Jonathan Owens picks it up. Thank God they didn't blow it dead, right? Yep. But you're going to see multiple angles here. They're going to show it in slow motion. Look at the awareness that Gary has smacking this ball out. Look at him go right for the elbow. See his right arm? Yep. Right hand goes straight for the elbow, man. He, and, and think of it, if he just grabs him around the waist, that ball comes out. It probably falls incomplete, and we never get that tutter, right? That very well could have happened. But look, he knows to go straight for the throwing elbow. It this is what we so talk cool. about with with uh, fundamentally sound, right? Proper yeah. technique. Absolutely. I mean, he played this whole entire play perfect from snap until until he, to, to the end of the play. I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. And you're perfect. right. It doesn't happen without Kenny Clark either. No. You know. Sure doesn't. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. 
because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Yep, yeah. beautiful play, man. Again, Rashawn Gary, he and Jordan Love should have had turkey legs, and it's absolutely pathetic that Fox didn't have them. Um, I love Fox. Fox NFL Sunday is my favorite my favorite, you know, TV cast. But that is ridiculous that they didn't even have those boys a turkey. But, again, watch Kenny. And, and this is why you you come out with these type of fronts here, okay? Zero tech, there's your twos, right, which means this guy right here is in a three tech. What's Kenny in? Some people would say that's a three, right? A three would be right here, and this is where you're splitting hairs, and I'm okay with people calling that a three. But technically what that is, you're on the inside shoulder, of the tackle. If you were over top of the tackle, it would be a four. That's what they refer to as a four I. So he's eating up half a man there. The reason you do that and the reason you got Gary out here in this wide nine, imagine if there's a tight end here, right? That would be a six tech. You're out here what we call a wide nine. What you're guaranteeing here, Tim, is you got isolation. He's got to block him. He's got to block him. The center can't help, right? Nope. So the center's going to fade back and just try to pick somebody, but Kenny's going to be so – so far off the ball and gone. Watch the jump that Kenny gets right there in that four eye. Look at this. I mean, that's a freaking clinic. It almost it, looked like the center was trying to pick up the Mike Fire, trying to pick up Quay. And yep. then Quay, you see how Quay kind of he kind of yep. bounced back out there. That's absolutely. And now the right guard's got to deal with him. Like that was yep. you know, and all you, these little things that impact the play, you know. It, it's really cool to see this. Yeah. And when you bring five like that, what you're forcing is an isolation play. If they're going to keep the running back in, okay, you got a plus one hat count in the pass block. But when you don't do that, you got one on one. And I'm telling you right now, these two guys right here. And when it comes to the pass, we've been very critical of Kenny's run run game, run run defense uh, game, I should say. Bro, pass rushing, there might not be anyone better in the league than Kenny Clark. And these two guys right here on the same side of the field in isolation plays, I don't care how good your offensive line is. Tim, you remember leading up to the game, we pointed out on PFF, left guard was a weakness for them. Yep. Right here is the probably the most impactful play of the day. And it came from getting Kenny Clark isolated with a five-man rush on that weak left guard. He gets pressure, forces Goff up, and then, of course, Gary with the motor. Bang. That's how you win ball games in the National Football League. Man. It's the little things. Now, I was just as excited for this as anything else, Dan. This is the <laughs> very next play, man. Kickoff. I just put Benny Sapp. Yeah. Watch Benny Sapp get down there. I'm going to go 100% just to, so you can see it in real time. Look at this guy come flying in. Bang. Bang. Bro. And I love what he does here, too. He flexes and says, hold on, man. I, I, where's my camera at? Which, where's my camera? Where's my camera? There's my camera right there. Let me go over and get in this camera. What's <laughs> up? What's up, Mama? Happy Thanksgiving. Love it, dude. We ought to show that. That that play should be shown uh, in the film room to these high school teams, for sure. <laughs> like development-wise. Like, you want to talk about how to get down the field on special teams. I mean, yeah. he what Benny Sapp was the missile on that play for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, so let's fast forward. A minute 30 left. This is a third and five play. I'm telling you, Joe Barry was, I mean, putting on an absolute clinic. No Jair Alexander, no Rudy Ford, no Devondre Campbell, right? Yeah, no Devondre Campbell. And look at what they were able to do to a top three offense in the league. Definitely a top five, probably a top three in most people's eyes. We come out in a nickel two, four, five. Half quarter, quarter zone match. And this is what I want you to key in on. Look how wide these D tackles are right here, Tim, on this third and five. They're basically begging Jerry Goff 
we're what they're saying is you ain't got enough hair on your rear, rear end to try to run up the middle. Right. That's what they're saying. They're, they're daring him to. Yeah. They're wanting him to. They're wanting him. To. I'll tell you why they're wanting him to, because this guy right here, that's Mr. Carl Brooks. They've got him. They don't have him just on an all out rush right here. He's going to kind of engage and he knows that middle is going to be open. His job is to occupy an offensive lineman and try not to get too aggressive. Now, if there's no threat for him to to take off with the ball and run, then, yeah, finish, finish your pass rush. But I want you to key in on him. OK. And again, we're in nickel two, four, five, half quarter, quarter zone match, which is essentially let me just try to draw it out for you guys just so you know um, this guy right here is going to be playing deep half, so he's got half the field. And over here, you've got kind of a quarter look. There's a safety off the screen, another guy right here, and they're playing zone match, which means if and then we don't know the exact play call. We just know after a certain threshold it turns into man coverage. Really doesn't even matter at this point. Now what I want you to key in on, remember what we said about Carl Brooks right here, okay? But watch Preston. Forget everything else. Just isolate on Preston Smith right here for a second, okay? Right here at the bottom. Watch Preston Smith put this this right tackle. I believe this is Panay Sewell, the number two right tackle in the or number two offensive tackle in the entire National Football League. Tim, watch what he does to him right here. Just watch Preston Smith. Whoop! Look at that, bro. Yeah, I don't I don't understand why why people don't want him here next year. <laughs> I can still play because him. we need a salary cap, Tim. Yeah, we, we want the books me. to look balanced. <laughs> Bear me, and you know what? I, w- I I said a few weeks ago that Preston Smith was quietly having himself a, a pretty pretty solid year. Yeah, it's not so quiet anymore. You're starting to see more of this Absolutely. showing up on game film. This is having really one of his cool. having one of his best years of his career, man. Yep. Watch it again. Let's go down twenty five percent. Let's nerd out for a minute. Look at this. Panay Sewell didn't know whether to crap or go blind, so he closed one eye for it, bro. Don't you love them? Those like kind of like vet on vet type battles that you mm-hmm. that you get to see. You know, you're oh, talking absolutely. about two of the two guys that know what they're doing. And yeah, you know what? That's the thing that I love the most too is the athleticism that Preston Smith brings to that position. Much like Rashawn Gary, you know, these guys are athletic, agile edge rushers, and this is. This is why they make the big bucks, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Yep. Now focus your attention to, I believe he's in a four-eye. It's kind of hard to tell here. It could have been a three, but I think it's a four-eye tech. Remember we were talking earlier about Kenny? Watch Kenny on this play right here. Okay, watch Kenny Clark right here. The four-eye. Let me speed it up just a touch here. Look at Kenny get back. Look look at him push and push and push and look at him. He's on him. That right there is what forced him to bail, right? Kenny Clark with another pressure gets inside, abuses that right guard. Preston's got him in his grasp, can't finish it. Listen, you got to finish that. You got to be able to finish that. When you get to when you get this look right here, you've got to be able to finish that. Sack, yep. right? But with that being said, remember what we said about Carl Brooks. Watch Carl Brooks the whole time now. I love that we're spending this much time on this play because the defensive line deserves some praise for this game, man. Jordan Love got a lot of praise. Rashawn Gary got a lot of praise. But these, these big hog mollies in the middle, man, watch him. He's going to – Work up, work up, and then come back around and make the tackle. Watch this. And, again, he could have just went all out rush. He doesn't. He puts his foot in the ground. Let's get back. Yep. And, bang, you want to talk about a game of inches. Wait till I zoom in and show you this fumble right here, Tim. This is absolutely wild, man. He, and it's because he, really, he he played the technique all the way through, like you said. What was pre-snap? What was the assignment? Mm-hmm. You know, and he did that to perfection. I like that if you watch the crown of his helmet, you see how quick he gets his eyes back around Mm -hmm. to the middle of the field as he's coming off of that pass rush. That was just a thing of beauty. Absolutely. So there you see Packers ball. Um, Carl Brooks actually recovered it too, by the way, which is really cool. Now right here, you talk about a game of inches. Watch Carl Brooks come in. I'm going to 25% again. Watch, Watch the ball and watch Carl Brooks's hand. A game of inches. Remember Gary hitting the elbow. Look at what causes this fumble, Tim. Literally one fingertip. Yep. God, I love this game, man. I, just I, enough. Football has got my soul right now, dude. I just love it, man. Love it. This Carl is- Brooks is a monster. He's gonna be, he's gonna, you're gonna see him get more and more snaps every single game, and rightfully so. He's a beast. Another guy had a great, I mean, an absolute great PFF grade in college and got overlooked because of his athletic score. Another one of those guys. So here's another good look. So, yeah, that is technically a four-eye with Kenny. You'll see the pressure there. Again, you'll see Carl Brooks rush up, come back and contain, and you'll see Preston Smith put our boy Panay Sewell 
in a spin cycle. Everything working in conjunction, forcing the bell out. Preston almost gets a hand on him, and then Carl just hustling, man. Bang. Beautiful, and we get the little the love bounce too, because as he's going to the ground, you see it kind of just ride, ride on the back, and it just ends up in his lap. I mean, yep. we had Rashad and 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 Keyshawn trying to get at it, and it it was our we he already had it recovered. That's amazing, man. You're right, yeah. game of inches, and I don't care what anyone says. You need you need plays like that to go your way, right? Because we've seen countless times this year Packers forcing fumbles, and the ball just takes that goofy bounce, or we don't we don't get the recovery. So, yeah. you know, that was that was awesome to see. Something else, you know, been a big concern for us, Tim, this year, Com- completion percentage accuracy. Look at those numbers right here at this yeah, point. Nine, for, nine of ten for 130 yards and two tutters for Jordan Love at this point in the second quarter. I mean, that accuracy, what, what a great game for Jordan Love, man. Absolutely awesome. So we're up 20 to 6, 10-38 left in the second quarter. This is a first and ten play. We're going to come out in 11-gun, nasty Trey right. You know what Trey means now. You know what nasty means. We'll spare you the details this time. We're going to go F quick motion, right? There's your F receiver, your flyer. He's going quick motion. We're going to go play action, T shoot, okay? Now, this kind of looked like an all go almost. These guys are looking to – I think he actually hesitates and comes out uh, in the flat. He's looking to stretch the field. What you're looking to do here, Tim, is you want to take all those defenders. You want to show play fake. You already hit a bomb earlier, right? That's what frees this up. So, you want to make sure that these routes are pulling these guys back, right? Play action, get them to pull up a bit, and then you want them belling out deep to cover that bomb that we showed earlier, right? That Remember that three-route combo we showed? Yep. So in this case right here, what you're going to do is you got your flyer in motion. Let's clear it off. And they're just going to kind of go deep, right? Everybody's going to clear out. And what it's going to do, play fake, shoot. That's a shoot route for the running back. And he's just going to get it. As soon as he sees all of these guys right here, really key in on all these guys. As soon as he play fakes, just, just keep your eyes on the secondary for a second, the defenders. Look at them belling already. Play fake, they're belling, they're belling. Look at all this space. That right there is Matt LaFleur putting on a freaking clinic. Because what you got now on this play action shoot is you got A.J. Dillon coming out of the backfield with a head of steam. Remember, we've seen this all year. Tim, how many times did we see something like this set up and Jordan held the ball, patted the ball, patted the ball? Yep. This time he gets it out. That's what we mean by playing on time. A.J. Dillon down the field, look at this right here. Hurdle a guy, take a lick from, uh, what's his name, uh, Anzalone, a grown butt man playing linebacker, and just <laughs> keeps on trucking, dude. And this is my favorite shot right here. Watch the sideline. Look at Bo Melton. Oh, yeah, dude. Look at this- Bo Melton. Bo Melton is Jack. Right here. Yeah. yeah. Watch this. Look at this man right here, number 52. Tell me this don't mean something to number 52 right here. Watch him. You ready? Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Came out here flexing, bro. Stop playing with him. <laughs> yeah. Now watch this. Our boy Jonesy over here, right? Let me pause it. Look, we got Jonesy watching. Look, all these guys. Look, even this guy. Look at Papaw back here. Like, oh, all right. That's Red. Me. That's our equipment guy. That's Look at Red. Red back there. Red back there doing a the thing. <laughs> Look at this, man. Look oh. at that sideline, dude. They're so fired up for AJ. And, and this is what somebody pointed out on Twitter. That linebacker hits him. Dude didn't even budge him, and he was in the air, bro. <laughs> right. This right here bothers me too, Tim. It's going to piss you off for a minute. Oh, I saw look, this look, one. I was, where's the I, flag? Yep. Yep. Can't, can't catch a break, bro. Like, seriously. That, that That's not even the side that the ball is in his hand. He's just going to punch him right in the chin. Here, Here's the other part. Run that back a little bit. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the ball's out. So this is like after the throw. Oh, absolutely. It's not even bang, bang. That ball's out. Yeah, right. Ball's out. Yep. Pop. (laughs) Right in the chin. So I don't want to hear any Lions fans saying they didn't catch any breaks. You know what I mean? That's right. So this right here got me excited too. Fast forward, 532 left in the third quarter. This is a fourth and five play. We're up 23 to 14. Guys, if they they convert this, they get all the momentum, right? They're going to run a fake punt here. I want you to key in. What they're basically going to do is a direct snap right here to number 42, okay? And he's just going to kind of look for a lane. He's hoping these people over-pursue, and he can find a lane here or get outside, look for a cutback, what have you. Typically what happens is if you've got a fake, if you've got a, a pump block call, these guys will just be overly aggressive. They'll come screening through, screening, yeah. screaming through, and then you'll see this guy kind of leak out, and they'll run right by him. Watch Enigbare. Excellent player. Watch him engage and set the edge right here. 
set the edge. They're going to hold their ground, and I want you to key in on Lucas Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness was a big factor in this game from this play right here alone. Watch him hustle this down. So they're going to do a direct snap. Watch LVN, how quick he picks it up. Watch Enigbari on the end. Look at look at Enigbari setting the edge right there. Now, I would hate to have this boy right here, Hercules, staring at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Jason Voorhees right here, which is all right. This boy's mine. Bang. Great play. Great special teams play, Tim. Just clutch, man. And really it is like off the snap where he where he is off the snap. Oh, this is a pretty good angle, too. Oh, it's a great angle. Watch right here. Also, I think it was uh Carl Brooks. It's Carl, yeah, Carl Brooks is right here. Watch him hustle too. They all pick it up. Watch this. They're gonna draw on the screen for a minute and say, Hey, we're all going this way. Okay. All right, watch Nick Bory set the edge. Look at look at LVN and what look at Carl Brooks right here, man. Yep. They already read it. Carl Brooks comes mm-hmm. in just to make sure that he doesn't get away, right? Just a phenomenal play, man. So third quarter, 337 left, third and three play. Um, 23 to 14. Green Bay Packers are leading. This is a huge play on third down. We come out in 11 gun, doubles nasty, strong left T week, Y quick, Hoss, slot climb. Z curl T swing. All right. So you guys, let's, let's draw this out for people. We may have some new listeners. Let's, let's draw one out for them here. One, uh, 11 personnel, 11 gun means you're in the gun set, right? You got one running back. You've got one tied in. You're in doubles, which means two by two. There's two over here. There's two over here. Okay. You're in nasty, which means you're lined up inside the numbers. Okay. So that's a nasty split all the way around. So 11 gun doubles nasty. You're going strong left because you're tied in. Your Y is over here on the left. You're going Y quick because you can see he was set up here. He went quick motion, so he's going to quick motion out. And the call is Haas slot climb, Z curl, T swing. Haas is real simple. It's just going to be a curl with a go, okay? So he's going to kind of do a nine fade. It's really going to be more out here, okay? So it's like a nine fade. It's not a corner. It's a go route. You read leverage and you, you find the open spot, okay? On the opposite side, you've got your slot receiver is going to run a climb, okay? And up top, you're going to have a Z curl where he's just going to sit, all right? And then you've got the T swing. Now, remember we talked about this, Tim. We talked about how you've got pick a side. One side's a one high beater. The other side's a two high beater, right? So if they're in single high coverage, the, the one high beater, in my opinion, is down here on the bottom, okay? That's your one high beater. If it's too high, if they disguise something and you end up with a second safety on the shelf, right? Let's say that there was a safety up here on the shelf and this guy drops out and he's out here deep, right? What do we talk about? When there's two on the shelf, middle field open. We call that middle field open, single highs, middle field close. So what you essentially have, if we draw it back out with the slot cross, there is your two high beater, right? And down here is your one high beater. Got me? That's what we mean by pick a side. Ball snap, safety stays center. Where's your play go? All day long, your read is going to be immediately to Watson because you've got a single high safety. So you're going to take that shot play. And this is the Watson touchdown. Beautiful throw by Jordan Love. No hesitation. I mean, and what a catch. What a freaking catch by yep. Christian Watson. What What's your attack with these hands, dude? This is very similar to the one Rome came down with last yes. week. Yes, very similar. And again, very, very similar. Think about the chair route in Pittsburgh, Tim. Yep. You know, why did Matt LaFleur say, ah, typically when they're in shell coverage, two on the shelf, we don't want you to go there with the ball because you're attacking middle field against shell. This is single high. Now you go up here. Jordan mm-hmm. is reading. It would be real easy to go. Last time we had a deep route down the sideline when I was in the red zone, I threw a pick. It'd be real easy to be gun shot. No, trust your instincts. Middle field closed, middle field open. Go to the fade. And just Great ball athlete. placement. Oh, perfect, dude. I mean, perfect. And this is a better angle right here. I'll try to slow it down for you. First of all, watch the route. Watch him. Quick hands, get off of me. Look at that speed. He's gone. Yeah, by the way, don't, don't worry about calling defensive holding. It's okay. Yeah, right. Look at this. Dude, what a – I'm telling you, man. If I hear someone else say that Christian Watson doesn't have hands, I'm going to slap him. Look <laughs> watch him. Bro, that's a great catch. <laughs> It is. It's an absolute great throw, great catch. Watch him spin this sucker, too. He looks more comfortable delivering the ball. Oh, he, he really does. Uh, he's seeing things at a different level right now, man. 
It's exciting. It's real exciting. All right, let's fast forward. Fourth quarter, 13-38 left. It's a fourth and seven play. I, I diagnosed this wrong. I'm going to explain how I diagnosed it wrong. Originally, I said nickel two, four, five. There's your two down linemen. Let's switch to blue for the linebackers. There is your four linebackers. Okay, nickel, nickel two, four, five. I thought it was cover one triple rat. And what that would mean is deep third. Or I'm sorry, not deep third. It would be man coverage, man coverage, man coverage, right? Man coverage and man coverage. And you got a safety off screen that's cover one man, right? That's what I was kind of thinking. Okay, what is, uh, you know, uh, I originally was thinking cover one man. And then you had triple rat, meaning you were going to have three underneath drop into coverage. So you're going to have three guys covering underneath while everyone else is in man coverage. I was wrong. This actually looks like it ended up being cover three zone match. And the reason you could tell is because Keyshawn actually carries a receiver down the seam. If and then, right? If yeah. and then is the play call. It doesn't even really matter, but I wanted to point that out. That was the play call. It was actually, it wasn't cover one triple rat. It'd be cover three zone match. But watch Rashawn Gary here. You need a play. You need to put this game, try to put this game away in the fourth quarter. They're obviously driving down the field. This is a fourth and seven play. This is really the game on the line here. Now you can go into your, your prevent style defense and make them chew up that clock. But watch Gary here with a little mini speed dip and rip. Um, some people could say it's a it's a swat and rip, swat dip and rip. I think it's more of a, a speed dip and rip. He gets his hands on him, but watch him get outside, get low, and rip that left arm up. Right here, hesitation, rip. And what's he do again, Tim? Go straight for the ball. Yep. You can't – I mean, that right there is the difference between a veteran getting a strip sack and a young player just getting a sack. And you'll see it from this next angle. I mean, he – when he comes down with this right hand, it's like he's a boxer, Tim. Look at this. This is Charles Woodson stuff. Yep. Dang. Boom. Bro, that right there. That's how you get a that's how you should have got a turkey leg. By the way, thanks for the Hogan call. Look at this guy got him by the collar. Look, oh yeah. Bro, look at his eyes, man. <laughs> look at this guy. I do not want to be this dude. I promise you that. He has no idea. He has no clue. <laughs> yeah. This this right here. This is Mandy swapping the credit card, and this is me having no idea the statement's coming. <laughs> it's coming right now. Look at this. God, I love it, dude. Boom. Absolutely love it. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, Everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. That you think you think Matt LaFleur appreciates Rashawn Gary? Oh yeah. Again, watch right here. Look, watch the move on the left side here. And this is where I caught it when I watched it back through the third time. I made my third pass. That's where you can see Keyshawn carry that receiver. You'll see the one they were just circling back there. That's when I realized, oh crap, that's zone match. That right. wasn't triple rat. So it was zone match, and you had uh, some guys just playing underneath. Now, let's uh, let's focus on Gary now that I pointed out my mistake there. It, that's why you watch it three times, too. You 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 learn something. It's like, okay, they're they're doing a little more than I thought there. But yep. watch Gary over here on the left this time. Look at him rip. See the arm rip up, the left arm? It's yep. over. Bang. You love to see it, man. Look, right here. This is my favorite part. What's it say right here? Read it for him. Twenty twenty four. Hey, I'm leading. I'm the campaign manager. Barry will be back in 2024. 
I'm speaking it into existence. Watch Barry right here, dude. He said, it's right. I got another, I got a job next year, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> love to see him show a little emotion, man. You'd love to see it. Um, all right. So now this is the final play we're breaking down. This is in the fourth quarter. Obviously, I think this was, yeah, this was a fourth down right here. Oh, they're, I remember just, this. What's that? I remember this one. Yeah. This one got me fired up because it's Quay making a play here at the end. Quay didn't grade out well. But game on the line, he really clutches up here. This is zone match. We're going nickel, two, four, five quarters, zone match. What zone match means is if and then. With Quay, if the tight end comes out here and runs a curl, he's going to squat on it, right? He's just going to kind of stay in his zone. If he goes down the seam, he's going to kind of reroute him outside, and then he's going to sit in this zone, right? But instead, what happens? Like Coach Haddad said when we had him on the show, you're going to see the tight end is going to go to the flat if – and then, if he goes to the flat, then it turns into man coverage. And he's basically going to wheel that off down the sideline, right? So, watch Quay Walker on this play. Absolutely awesome job here. See, he's kind of he's kind of reading them. Okay, it's not really man. They're passing people off. Now it turns if and then. The flat isn't there. And look at Quay run but stride for stride with Sam Laporta here, man. Yep. Didn't have to get his hand around because the coverage was so tight. Ball game, baby. And he knows he knows when he's rolling out there that hey, you know the, the there's a, a likelihood that the ball's going to be in the air behind me. So it's not so much getting the head around; it's you know stay in coverage, be disciplined, don't commit a penalty, right? And uh, just get your hand up there and and make the play. I mean, great work by Quay Walker. It was a lot of fun to watch, man. And again. There at the end, they go down and they scored a touchdown, right? And it was kind of mop-up time. I thought, what's the point in showing that? Um, I, I did want to mention because some people would say, oh, you didn't show the drive where they scored at the end because I am a Joe because I am the campaign manager for Joe Barry. But anyway, <laughs> uh, listen, once again, I always have to say this. I make jokes. I like to crack jokes and everything. But Joe Barry, Joe Barry I don't think he's a great defensive coordinator. I don't. I, I think he's – I think with the right pieces, he's a good defensive coordinator. That's me personally. Um, I think he's got a lot of pieces to work with. If he, if he was on a lesser defense, I think that defense would have way worse numbers as far as rankings right now. Where We are a top 10 defense, whether people want to admit it or not. We're like sixth in points per play, and we're 10th in points per game. I could care less about any other metric. What I want to know is, and the reason I like points per play is because immediately when you say points per game, people go, oh, well, what about the yards, this and that? Okay, well, let's break it down points per play. You know, if they look at it from a sense of, you know, some other defenses, like someone immediately said, well, the reason the Jets, there was people saying that we want Robert Sala as a defensive coordinator next year, Tim. And I immediately said, okay, I like Robert Sala as a coach. Where are the Jets ranked? And they're like yeah. five spots below. And they immediately said, well, that's because their offense is so bad. That has nothing to do with points per play. That's why I love that metric. It's why Las Vegas loves that metric. So when you looked at it from that, that stat, analytical, you know, uh, angle. That's what I like about what he's doing with his defense. It's bend but don't break. You've seen it right there. It, yep. You you bent all the way down the field and forced them to use every inch of the field, hoping they'd make a mistake. They didn't. Okay, they're within striking range. They run out of room because you're in that quarter zone match, and now you've got basically multiple extra defenders as the out-of-bounds and now they have to make a decision. Are we going to be overly aggressive here or not? And they they were forced to go for a touchdown in that situation to try to get back in the ball game. I just – I love what they're doing, man. So, Togrel, thank you for the super chat. He said, I said it once, please don't slap me, sir. I don't know what he's talking about there. What's he talking about, you think? You, you said you were uh, going to put hands on someone that says oh, gotcha. uh, Christian ain't got no hands. <laughs> yeah, there um, it is. He paid $2 just to clarify. Togrel, we appreciate you, buddy. He said, last play on offense, Myers was beat badly. Oh, really? Hmm. Might need to go back and look at that then. Myers – uh. Myers didn't grade out great in pass blocking. That's usually his strength. Uh, I, I got to tell you though, he had one heck of a play. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find it. Oh, I actually did find it. It was um, one of Baldy's breakdowns. Um, but uh, Myers pulled really nasty, and they they basically took Aiden Hutchinson out of a play, and Josh Myers was absolutely crucial to it. Um, mm -hmm. You're seeing some of that, but yeah, he's. Not great and not well, but we also know PFF is, you know, it's subjective, right? So, like, right. I, I don't know. He's still our center, right? 
<laughs> he still is. Hey, I'll tell you, uh, the 33rd team likes him pretty well. So yeah. um, when the coaching staff says, no, nah, we think he's doing a great job, and the 33rd team, which is comprised of a whole lot of football coaches, a whole lot of football executives, and they got him graded high, they have no reason to, to tote the company line, right? So um, unless they're trying to get on Green Bay staff next year, thinking there's going to be some job openings, but that's a story for another day. Uh, Josh Myers, I was wrong. He had a bad pass blocking day. In a, in a decent run block. I say decent, but it's really not. 63.7. It's decent for him, but that's that's still a bad uh, run blocking grade there for sure. And then uh, Togrel said with the Super Chat, when Love underthrew Watson, that was the play. Oh, got you. Got you, man. Got you. Good stuff. We, we appreciate you supporting the stream, man, uh, for sure. We did pretty good, Tim. We're at 50 minutes, bro. That Got them all covered. That 10-play limit, that's the sweet spot. You know I what I mean? So. That's that I sweet agree. spot. But I, most of the time I watch a game and I'm like, man, let's, let's fit three more in here. We can do this. <laughs> so uh, we always screw it up. But I, I do want to I do want to thank everybody for hanging out with us, man. We're going to hit a couple of these. This is Jay Lavra, 88, says, on that tight window throw to Reed, quarterback school said Watson should have been running a slant, I believe, in the other direction. Uh, can't remember exactly the route, but watch his video. I'll, I'll definitely check that out. Like I said, I know there were several people that, that kind of said it. if that was the case and it was going to be tosser slot slant then. It was basically, you call it triple tosser because tosser is double slant pass concept. That would make sense. The out there seems a little odd that that love would just go, ah, heck with it. We're going to fire this slant in here knowing that Christian Watson's cr- crossing over. So that does kind of make sense. So uh, Jay Lavra, thank you so much. For that information we really appreciate it man uh love what jt o'sullivan does over there he's absolutely phenomenal love mike wall breaking down a tape everybody so uh tim you got any parting thoughts man anything else you want to cover here before we wrap up here in the chat oh man just just excited man to go beat kansas city at home it's gonna be Woo! it's gonna be phenomenal um and i can't wait i can't wait to just watch the whole the whole narrative shift and see the see the people coming out of the work woodwork that said they believed all along you know, yada yada. This team so, can do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we got we got tape, man. You know, we we know who's our receipts, as you say, right, Clayton? We've got receipts. We don't always have to pull them out. You don't always need to pull the receipts, but you know, you have them. Um. So you know, following this team since since camp and and even before a little bit, and just really watching how things are coming together, I couldn't be prouder as a fan right now. This is this is just incredible. These guys are playing for each other. You know. And um, if they get hot here, there there is uh, there's a chance we could have a real real epically interesting end to our uh, 2023 season. So um, hope they keep it up, man. Everybody, you know, for the most part, like I didn't see us shooting ourselves in the foot in this game. You know, we, yeah. we that can't be understated. You know, this team is getting better. There were mistakes. There always are. Nobody's perfect, but there were a lot less mistakes um, on, on Thanksgiving. And um, I'm looking forward to them continuing this wave. You know, if they can play this well together, banged up, you know, if we get close to 90 or 100 percent again at some point, watch out. You know, and like I said, nobody's going to want to see this Packers team squeak into a wild card, um, you know, at all. And uh, and a young team like this. I mean, we've seen it, man. They can do damage. They can be a season record for a lot of uh, a lot of so-called contenders out there. So, um Let's go. Yeah. Oh, what do we got now? There's a chance, huh? It's up to 21% playoff uh, probability for the Packers. So okay. climbing a little bit every week, man. Climbing a little yeah. bit every week. There so, we go. Uh, really excited about that. Uh, Toll Girl, thank you for the super chase. Said overall, proud of the team. My only concern is the running game and center. Other than that, we're pretty much set for a promising future if love keeps it up. I would agree with that. Um, got to get the running game fixed. Uh, obviously got to get Jonesy healthy. Uh, I'm hoping he's got more in the tank, but, you know, it's not looked good this year. Uh, if you guys would, watching this stream right now, hop over and hit the like button for me real quick. We'd really appreciate it. I hate even asking. I feel so awkward asking, but um, the the fact that you guys have been smashing that like button for us here lately, there's been a lot of new listeners that are getting this kind of thrown into their algorithm and uh, and more Packer fans basically finding this podcast, finding this show, and we really appreciate y'all supporting us doing that. But, uh, yeah, Togor, I agree with all that. Anything you disagree with there, Tim, as far as center? I mean, running game, if if you had great center play right now and a solid running game, this team would be darn near unstoppable with the way the defense has stepped up and the way Jordan Love is really starting to peak, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Um, you know, I would say, you know, we got to think about left tackle here too. Um, you know, we don't want to have that, that discussion right now, <laughs> I guess. I know I don't. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, basically what you're saying is, is it starts with center for sure. I think, yeah. um, and that's going to be important, you know, like, you know, I, I don't want to say if I'm I'm pretty much convinced I have been for a while. Um, Jordan's the guy, you know, and if he's the guy going forward, you know, having that good relationship with a center, if we can get someone in here that that's going to play, these two can play together, um, have a good uh, relationship, good communication. Um, you see it a lot, you know, um, Jason Kelsey and um, and Jalen Hurts and the, the, the way that they communicate and run a line in Philly is something to watch. Um so center play is very important, but as a whole, yeah, our running game needs to come together and, and this offensive line's got to, got to really get it together with uh, the run blocking is where it really starts. But uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, definitely. And again, uh, Togrel, thank you so much for the super chats, buddy. Chris in, in the chat says, thank you, Tim and Clayton for your hard work. Hey, we appreciate you hanging out with us, man. Um, for sure. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I love getting here and talking ball with you guys. I look forward to it every day. I really do. This is something that, I knew I would enjoy doing a pod like this, but didn't know people were going to come out of the woodwork and actually hang out and talk ball. And that's what makes it so enjoyable. I, I know you guys get tired of hearing me say it, I'm sure, but I'm telling you, man, it's uh, it's just been a blast. It's been an absolute blast. Omer, I've been in here all day long. Appreciate you, buddy. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. Paul Robertson in the chat says, if the pack can stop the Chiefs running or contain it, no reason it won't be close. Jordan Love hasn't played a defense like the Chiefs before, so it would be the, his greatest test to date. You know, that sounds so odd hearing that, but it's so true, Paul. I think they've got the number three defense right now in the in the, uh, in the the league. I almost said country. I've been watching college ball all day long. But, uh, yeah, they, their defense is solid, man. It is. It's, okay. it's way underrated in my opinion. Um, they've been kind of carrying the Chiefs to the little bit of victory they've had this year, you know, kind of – kind of an off year for the Chiefs, but still having a solid year and obviously playoff bound most likely. So it's going to be fun to see it unfold. And we got – guys, we got another eight days, what, nine days to bask in the glory of this huge Thanksgiving Day win. We'll probably break down some more tape. We'll have fun with it. Um, but there's going to be a lot of content for sure. So really appreciate everybody hanging out with us. We're going to get out of here. Thank you guys for hitting that like button. We really appreciate that. want to give a special thanks to Tollgirl for all the super chats, buddy. You were awesome. Really appreciate you supporting the stream. Um, we will be back tomorrow morning for Good Morning Lambo, and uh, and just kind of talk a little bit of a little bit of morning ball. Get ready for a full slate of NFL games. Uh, obviously, it's pretty cool, Tim, when you've already got your dub out of the way and you can just sit back and watch some football, right? Amen. And uh, hopefully, the guys enjoy uh, a little mini buy here too. We can get healthy going into that Kansas City game, right? Absolutely. Sure, sure. We'll have the ice packs going. Guys will be hanging out, watching the games themselves too. So um, shout out to our Packers, man. You know, celebrate this victory, enjoy it. Um, but it's business time because uh, it's true. The Chiefs are coming to town. So it'll be all hands on deck. Go Pack, go. And here's a little primer for it for you guys too. Here's the standings, okay? Eagles, the number one seed. 49ers, the number two seed. Lions, the number three seed. Saints, the number four seed. Cowboys, number five. Vikings, six. Seahawks, seven. So we are rooting against the Vikings and the Seahawks tomorrow. Let me see if I got who they play here. We're looking for Vikings and Seahawks. Vikings and Seahawks. The Seahawks already got spanked on okay, Friday. So that's or right. Thursday. So Thursday so already got their ready. L out of the way. Minnesota is playing Chicago, guys. Monday night football. So that won't be tomorrow. That'll be Monday night football, Chicago and Minnesota. I hate to say it, but I'm going to be a Bears fan. I'll be a oh, Bears fan there Monday night for sure, and uh, I never thought I'd say that. So I, I got to hit myself with one of these, Tim. Anytime you say I'm going to be a Bears fan on Monday night. You call me anything you want, but don't call me that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> no That's doubt. the perfect clip right there for that. I love it. So the Cowboys, the Seahawks have already played. Not that the Cowboys matter anyway. They'll they'll have the NFC East wrapped up if for some reason the Eagles drop. I don't think anybody's catching them at the moment. Uh, Saints won't matter because the NFC South is absolute cheeks. So, yeah, that's really the uh, the only one we're waiting to watch is, uh, is Chicago and Minnesota as far as who's ahead of us. You get the Rams just below us. So uh, if you were to look at the schedule – there, the Rams play tomorrow at four o'clock against the Arizona Cardinals. That should be the toilet bowl. Four and six Rams against the two and nine Cardinals. So just keep an eye on that stuff. We want to keep our finger on the pulse. It's so cool that we're getting ready to head into December and we're actually talking about an opportunity to make the playoffs. I think, what, three, four weeks ago, Tim, we were all saying this. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game, another game. 
what what a what a difference back to back wins makes. You know, winning winning cures all. It's so true. And yeah. I'm telling you, they they get a third in a row here at home against Kansas City. NFL better watch out for this young Packers team. I'm telling you, I, I can feel it. It's going to be uh, a nice opportunity here to, you know, we talk about maybe squeaking in. Yeah. Right? Well, it's true. We, I mean, we control our own destiny here at some point. We, there's a lot of there's a lot of teams that are co- kind of on the bubble. And if we just keep finding ways to win these games, man, we, we could be playing postseason ball. Yeah. Probably not in Green Bay, probably going on the road for what <laughs> if we make the postseason. But uh, entertaining nonetheless, man, it's going to be a heck of a ride the rest of the year. How cool would it be if the lines completely imploded and we somehow won the division? Oh my gosh. Now now see now we're now we're now talking. We're hey, why not, man? Why not? Let's just why go not? all in, right? You why know? not? Hey, what, what does it do that? to your psyche when a banged up division rival comes into your building and beats you on Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah, th- there's a lot of second guessing going on in that yep. building right now. Yep. Um, let's see what what is the Lions record now? So they're now eight and three, but that's a tough sell. That's a tough sell, Tim. Yeah. But hey, there's always hope. They right? would have to implode, we'd have to win out for it to yeah. even be a remote possibility yeah absolutely um i know this uh if minnesota somehow some way loses to uh to the bears on monday night boy oh we're gonna give him some that's a <laughs> fact right there and we got Derek k with a special request here this is trl total request line he just says 65 percent. 65 65 hey that'll be the packers percentage uh chance to get into the playoffs after you know, a four or five game win streak. We'll be playing that 65% a lot more. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's get out of here. Hey, we got a chance to finish on time, Tim. You've been traveling. We're going to get out of here, guys. We appreciate everybody. Tim, thank you for hopping on here, man. This was fun. I was planning on going solo, but love it when you hopped in, man. Um, makes the the conversation so much more enjoyable. They don't have to hear me trying to sip coffee and save my voice while I talk for a straight <laughs> hour. But, uh, again, guys, we'll be back in the morning. For uh, Good Morning Lambo, hope to see you guys there. We'll be uh, Tim. Is that cool with you? Eight Central, uh, nine Eastern. Is that cool? I should be able to roll up out of bed and uh, and join hey, you. If you're a few minutes late, it's totally cool. I'll get that some- diesel going. Yeah, got to get that diesel going, man. First thing in the morning. I know you got you already got that coffee pot set, don't you? Oh yeah, man, dude. I I spent way too much money on my my coffee maker, but it's <laughs> worth every worth every penny, man. It, it's something you use every day, right? So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll have the Ninja programmed for sure for the morning, bro. You got to You got to have that diesel rig, buddy. And, and no decaf up in here. I don't want to hear anybody. You know, you you hit that decaf. This is what you get. <laughs> all right we're out of here guys oh, this is a, we are doing nothing productive now thank you guys for hanging out with us for those of you list, uh, listening on the pod thank you for making us a part of your day as always let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world and go pack up the power sweep actually it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense he's over down the first man to his inside Pull back and get him. Take the first man outside the offense. Exactly. No one shows. Go right by them and feel this back. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, we'll be trying to get a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. Mmm, the first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to Caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at Caskers.com.